Hey guys, my name is Choi Hong Liang. In this video, me and my group members from B7, Danish Oil Farmy, are going to explain about the experiment tree, heat of combustion, the bomb calorie meter. For this experiment, our objectives are to be able to understand the concept of heat and energy, understand that combustion is one of the processes to release energy from a substance and to understand that energy can be restored, released and changed to other forms. Antoine Lavoisier once quoted La respiration est donc une combustion. The inventor of the bomb calorimeter explained respiration is a form of combustion. Respiration is like combustion, a process which releases energy from a system. Energy also exists in the form of heat denoted by the letter Q. Combustion is a high temperature exothermic redox chemical reaction between a fuel and an oxidant, usually atmospheric oxygen. Calorimetry is used to measure quantities of heat and to determine the heat of reaction. Bomb calorimetry is ideal to measure the heat evolved in a combustion reaction. In this method, the heat released during combustion is used to heat water and raise its temperature. The heat of reaction can be determined if the mass of water and change in temperature of water is known. Next, let's move on to the procedures. Firstly, to calibrate the bomb calorimeter, two pellets of standard benzoic acid were prepared with each having mass between 0.8 gram to 1 gram. One of the pellets was placed into a weighing bottle. The lid was put on and it is weighed to 0.2 mg. The power bomb calorimeter was switched on and the pellet was placed into the cup and the cup was put into the sample terminal. A piece of fuse wire was about uh, 10 cm long was cut. The fuse wire was connected to the terminals and the wire was tightly attached to the sample. Next, exactly 1 ml of distilled water was piped and carefully introduced into the bottom of the bucket. Then, the jacket was filled with 2 liters of water and followed with the installation of the terminal into the jacket. The key bucket was locked and tightened by hand pressure. The setup is shown in figure 3.1. Here is the figure 3.1. Next, the gas lock was closed and the oxygen cylinder was connected to the terminal. The gas fill button was pressed for 60 seconds. Then, the wire, positive and negative, was connected to the terminal. Start button was pressed and the process was completed with the addition of operator ID and the sample weight. Finally, enter was pressed and the process was waited to reach completion. The temperature was recorded 30 seconds from the start and every 15 seconds interval for another 2 minutes. After 2 minutes, the temperature was recorded at a 1 minute interval until a constant temperature was reached. Then the experiment was stopped. The model was switched off Electrical circuits were removed and the calorimeter was open. The thermometer was dried, the ignition wire was disconnected and a bomb was taken out from the water container. All oxygen was released from the bomb, the tooth ring was unscrewed and the bomb was rinsed with water. The rinsed water was transferred quantitatively into a beaker and titrated with a standard sodium hydroxide solution and methyl orange indicator until end point was reached as shown in figure 3.2 the length of the residual fuse wire was removed straightened and measured the length of the burn fuse wire was determined by subtraction of length between the original and the residual fuse wire lastly the above procedures were repeated using the second sample of standard benzoic acid pellet, followed by our naphthalene. Now, let's look at our results. So, as you can see in this table 3.1, we have a list of bucket temperature data for standard benzoic acid and our naphthalene. The mass of benzoic acid is 1 gram while the mass of naphthalene pellets is 0.93 gram. 
We also have a wire length and titration volume results, which is shown in table 3.2 and table 3.3. The length of wire burn for benzoic acid is 5.1 cm, while for naphthalene is 8.7 cm. On the other hand, the volume used in titration for benzoic acid is 4.32 ml, and for naphthalene, it is 11.6 ml. Now, by using bucket temperature and the time taken, graphs can be plotted for both benzoic acid and naphthalene. Figure 3.3 shows a graph of temperature against time for benzoic acid. The data analysis and calculation for benzoic acid is shown in this list. We have a correction of temperature rise, T actual, heat release during fused wire combustion, Q1, heat release during HNO3 formation, Q2, heat capacity of calorimeter, C, the internal energy of one mole of benzoic acid, delta E, the work done, delta PV, and lastly, from this equation, from this list of data, we can get a combustion enthalpy for one mole of benzoic acid, which is delta H. We can get it from the sum of delta E and delta PV. Because combustion is an exothermic process, combustion enthalpy delta H is a negative value, which we get is negative. 3473.017 kJ per mole. So that's all for benzoic acid. Now for naphthalene, same analysis and calculations can be applied to naphthalene. Figure 3.4 shows a graph of temperature against time for naphthalene. Again, here is a list of data analysis for naphthalene. We have a correction of temperature rise, T actual, heat release during fused wire combustion, Q1, heat release during acid nitric formation, Q2, heat capacity of calorimeter, C, the internal energy of one mole of naphthalene, delta E, the work done, delta P, and lastly, we can get combustion of enthalpy for one mole of naphthalene, which is delta H. We can get delta H by adding delta E and the work done delta PV. Because combustion is an exothermic process, combustion enthalpy is in negative value. Hence, we get delta H equals to negative 5535.67 kJ per mole. Now let's head on to discussion. The thermodynamics of bomb calorimetry are modeled using a lump heat transfer analysis in which heat is released in a bomb immersed in a stirred water bath that is surrounded by a static airspace bounded by an insulated static jacket, a controlled temperature jacket, or isoperi ball, or an adiabatic jacket. The temperature history of the water bath for each of these boundary conditions is well described by the two-term solution for the calorimeter response to a heat impulse, or known as combustion, allowing the heat transfer coefficients and thermal capacities of the bomb and water bath to be determined parametrically. The validated heat transfer model provides an expression for a direct calculation of the heat released in a combustion inside a bomb calorimeter using the temperature history of the water bath for each of the boundary conditions. The bomb calorimeter generated a list of temperatures and the time associated with each combustion between benzoic acid and naphthalene it is assumed that the resonance energy of naphthalene would be greater than benzoic acid because the more rings in a compound, the higher its resonance energy due to the delocalization of electrons. The experimental combustion enthalpy for one mole of naphthalene is minus 5535 and 67 kJ per mole, which is higher than that of benzoic acid at minus 3473.017 kJ per mole. However, the experimental value for combustion enthalpy for naphthalene deviated more from the theoretical value at minus 5143.18 kJ per mole, while the experimental value for combustion enthalpy for benzoic acid was closer to the theoretical value at minus 3228 kJ per mole. 
So these are the structures of benzoic acid and naphthalene. The uncertainty in temperature is a major source of error in the final experimental results due to the crucial usage of temperatures in the early steps of calculations. The calculation for corrected energy to standard temperature shows how much the enthalpy values would change for one mole of benzoic acid and naphthalene which are 1,146.21 joules and 4,602.45 joules respectively. Comparing the contribution of the work done, which is in the term delta PV, it is clear that the magnitude of the uncertainty is greater than the entire delta PV term. Owens also mentioned that the moisture levels in combusted samples were non-significant, that apparent gross energy was not influenced by moisture content. Nevertheless, the method of wet bomb calorimetry has the advantage in preventing errors due to the loss of volatile energetic components during the drying process. So, the conclusion. The concept of heat and energy is understood. Combustion is a process to release energy from a substance. Energy can be restored, released, and converted to other forms. Number two, the heat capacity for a bomb calorimeter is 11,050.52 joules per degree Celsius. The actual combustion enthalpy for benzoic acid is minus 3,473.017 kilojoules per mole, and the actual combustion enthalpy of naphthalene is minus 5,535.67 kilojoules per mole. And these are the list of references. Thank you for watching.